This month, I'm teaching myself Spanish on Duolingo and also Italian on Rosetta Stone. But welcome to the official documentation, vlog, video, whatever of my October project. My month project of November was to get as far as possible in this short film. This video is kind of a progress uh, through art. And I spent a month doing Spanish on the learning platform Duolingo and Italian on the learning platform Rosetta Stone. But look, look at this. And then a PHP variable here. And then if you go to the portfolio, you click development and it'll show up all the development and stuff. 12 6 a.m. on November 2nd. Oh my god. And on the 10th night, it was complete. Got the donut here, some little animation keyframes. Hello everyone, my name is Mark, and if you're new to the channel, I'm happy to have you. In August of 2019, I decided to do something that was on my list for a while and tackle one project every single month. I wanted to continue this throughout 2020, but then we all got corona and I decided to use the time I have this summer to work on some very specific projects. However, there's a project I'm currently working on, and every Sunday I host a goal planning event with a group of people on a Discord server I help out on, and we started talking about project planning, so I decided that would be this week's video. All in all, it breaks down to explicitly defining your goals, not just the end goal, but the journey. How to schedule your time so that it's flexible, applying yourself with what you've learned to your project over time, and lastly, to define a reward once you've hit your resolution. So, you have an idea and you want to execute. Make sure that you can sell yourself on your idea. In September, I kicked off my projects strong for the fall semester with Duolingo versus Rosetta Stone. With this project, I journaled every day, and while I most definitely don't do that for any other projects, it made me realize how key it is to have a well-defined goal. My goal was not to just learn Italian and learn Spanish, but very specifically to immerse myself in both of these applications so that I could make a comparison that helps anyone who might be looking to define which one would be better for them. So now it's your turn. Define your goal in a sentence or a pitch. The problem I experienced is that goals can't be too broad. Instead of, I want to learn Italian, make it, I want to become pretty basically fluent in Italian so I can speak to my friends who live in Italy when I go to see them at the end of the year. This is the pitch that you'll give yourself when you might not feel motivated or incentivized to sit down and work on your project for the day. Motivation itself is fickle, but if you define your reason in a well thought out way, it will drive you. In particular, you want a quantity, a how, and a reason, a why. So instead of I wanna read more, I wanna read a few pages a day so that I can get off the computer a bit more and finish these 20 books I have stacked on my bookshelf. Now, whether you spend 10 minutes or two hours drafting up your goal, Know that it's gonna change. Goals are flexible over time, so don't be afraid to redefine it as you go. For my current game project, my goal is to make a simple prototype of the first two levels or areas. Having this defined goal makes me more excited to sit down and start because I know where I'm heading. So when you do sit down, let's talk about what you do, how you practice, how you learn. I cannot recommend enough, especially for project-based things or things that have a deadline, to create consistent times that you will work on your project or a habit. Really anywhere in life, but specifically habits, creating consistency in a schedule will make processes more automatic. In other words, more consistency leads to less friction when you sit down and actually start doing. As a quick aside, don't get too caught up in the rigidness of schedules. Schedules allow you to take things out of your mind so that you can focus on what's happening right now, what's happening today. So go ahead, right now, put in some consistent time blocks that you're gonna work on your project. It can be every Tuesday from five to 6 p.m. or just on Wednesday, I'm gonna find some half an hour block to spend on this project. In November, my project was to create the first 10 to 15 seconds of a short film animation. The first two weeks, I spent most of my time working on an online YouTube tutorial to get to know my way around Blender 2.8. This way, I was learning my way around the software, but also building up the consistent habit so that when I sat down to work on this short film, it would be easier to start. Here's a look at this initial schedule I had for the animation project. My goal was too broad, so I didn't make it, but I did end up getting somewhere for learning. So take a short minute and define how you're going to learn and more specifically how you're going to practice. You can read all the math textbooks in the world, but if you don't practice problems, you're never going to get the information to stick. During the second week of the animation project, I started practicing on some other 3D models that weren't part of the course. If you're working on typing, per se, define what programs and applications might be helpful to 
you, but also find times when you can push yourself so you can reach that next level. As you learn and practice, not only are you building a consistent schedule and habit for yourself, but you're paving the way to apply yourself to whatever your final project or end goal might be. For example, for the aforementioned game project, right now I'm doing some Unity and Unreal Engine tutorials for which engine I want to use. But that learning and that habit consistency will carry over for when I finally sit down and say, all right, it's time to work on this game. So take a moment now and write down what comes to mind for how you will learn and how you will practice. Whether you pause the video and come back in 10 minutes or scroll down to the comments just to jot it down somewhere. When it came to my portfolio project in October, by the end of week two, I jumped right into my website because what I had learned was specifically based around what I wanted to do for this final website. I went a day over to November 1st, but I got the website done because I knew what my vision was for it. When it comes to finally working on your final project or you're in the final stretch for your end goal, think about the strategies you use during your learning and practicing phases to plan ahead. Maybe 5 to 6 p.m. every Wednesday was working perfectly for you, but maybe it wasn't. So perhaps try shifting things to 30 minutes of work after lunch, whenever that may be, every other day. As I said, consistency is key. So when you're planning your time, I recommend using either the input method or the output method. The input output method is something that I used in my monthly projects and found that once it worked well with my schoolwork planning as well, I started to define it very specifically. They break down into two pretty simple concepts. If you schedule something based on input, you are putting aside a specific block of time to work on whatever is next in your project. For example, if I schedule an hour and a half on a Tuesday to work on my video script, I pick up where I left off on Monday and work for that entire time, whether it be deep work or something like Pomodoro sessions. Whatever I get done in that time window is whatever I get done. So next time block, I start right where I left off. The output method is a bit tougher to time block, but it can surprise you by giving you more time in your day. Put aside a specific part of your project or a specific output that you will spend time on. For example, for these videos, I started off by saying I would spend two hours on Wednesday recording the A-roll and so on and so forth throughout the week. If it took me only one hour, then great, I got to get a head start or take a break. A little cautionary note, however, I found myself saying, oh, the script will only take me 30 minutes. So I would take the break the first half of that two hour time block. Make sure you start on time. And speaking of starting, sometimes it's really hard to sit down and just start, especially while you're building the habit. And this is one of those moments where your pitch comes in. To remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing and that special thing you're trying to achieve. If you block out two hours and find you can't focus the entire time, then go ahead and move that back to an hour, even 30 minutes, start off small. If you find you're getting distracted during your work periods, identify those distractions and put them away. Put your phone in another room. All in all, I would recommend starting at just 10 minutes a day. And this 10 minute rule is something that really helps me with habit formation. And I'll put an info card to a Wheezy Waiter video that I think is fantastic. For my game, when I sit down and look at Unreal Engine, I'm like, oh my God, there's so much going on. But I remember this end goal in mind, I don't have to make this whole game. All I'm doing is making a crappy prototype with crappy art assets. And then at the end of my work period, I can say I did something concrete. And I I can use what I learned during this work period to plan ahead for the next one. So you have all your steps defined and you're ready to start working, but defining an end goal or a reward can be super fulfilling. The animation short film project I mentioned earlier actually is transformed into this game project that I keep talking about. Objectively, it's something to just get done and get a feel for things in game design. That's my end goal, sure, but the reward is something that really feels fulfilling in the end, beyond the objective into the subjective. Rewards, for me, break down into inherent rewards and external rewards. The short film started from a script a friend of mine wrote our junior year of high school, almost three years ago now, and I wanted to turn that into a short film for the longest time. The idea of being able to send him a prototype of this game and be like, hey man, I'm finally taking action on this idea you had that I wanted to make into a reality really is exciting. It really is, just makes me so enthusiastic. Having this byproduct, this thing that naturally comes out of finishing the project is a fantastic feeling. Now, there is a danger to visualizing a reward too much where the predicted or expected reward can outweigh the actual reward once you receive it. If you want to read more about that, there will be a link in the description below. However, if your why is strong enough and you've been getting through the how so far, you should be good to go. You know, if you're learning a language, maybe envisioning yourself traveling to that country and being able to speak with the locals and truly get the most out of the experience. Also, if you want to define a material reward, I think you should. It just shouldn't be the only thing. Using material rewards like a new camera or a new set of earbuds is a great way to make use of the basic reward system. And remember, your goals are flexible and they should change over time. 
When climbers first climb Mount Everest, they can't go from the base to the peak. While I'll ignore the reason why they have to do that, note that goals are just like this. So if you want to read one book a week, start by reading one book every month and then break it down so you can eventually get to the peak. And then when you complete that goal, make a new one. Keep pushing yourself. Don't stop moving forward. Thank you so much for watching this video. I was a bit pressured to work on it because monthly projects are something I hold very dear to my heart. And so this system, I feel like I almost didn't even do it justice. But during quarantine, I thought it would be a great time to make the video for anyone out there who is looking for a bit of a structure to get started with. To find ideas, jot down all the things you want to do, pick a few, and define them some more. All in all, I really hope you enjoyed this video and more importantly got some value out of it. If you enjoyed it and you made it this far, take a look at this playlist here since it's kind of a similar set of videos. I'd love to hear what you're going to work on in the future down in the comments below, whether that be a short film animation or working on your schoolwork with more intent. Thanks again for watching. Keep reaching your goals. Keep making new goals. Have a good one. And as always, don't forget to stay awesome.